Hello readers, I'm Adam aka A Dude Who Reads and today I want to do the booktube newbie tag because, well, I'm a newbie and I wanted you to get to know me so maybe you stick around, see a few more of my videos and uh, we can get to chatting about books because it's kind of the point around here, right? Alright, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with question number one. Why did I start this channel? Um, well, I wish I had a really original answer here, and I kind of thought my answer was original until I started watching a lot of other creators' newbie tag videos, and I realized a lot of us are here for the same reason. Um, we have a love for books, a passion for books, but we don't necessarily have a ton of people in our own social circles with which we can share this passion and this love. And so we go online and we look for people to share that passion with so that we can talk about uh, one of our favorite hobbies. And so that's why I decided to start a booktube channel. And so here I am. I want to, uh, I want to get to know you guys. Uh, and if there's a secondary reason and I can accomplish this, then I'll feel really good about it. If not, so be it. But that secondary reason would be uh, I would love to be able to spread the joy of reading. I would love to be able to, uh, if I can convince even one person to pick up a book for the first time since, you know, high school days, uh, I would be super thrilled with that. And so if I can make that happen, make someone who just happens to stumble upon my YouTube videos, hear what I have to say and say, you know what, I'm going to give reading a shot, that would make me just over the moon happy. Question number two, what can I bring to book two? Um, this is, a, this is a tough question. There are so many great creators on booktube already that for me to presume that I am going to come in and change the game, uh, well, seems pretty presumptuous, doesn't it? So I guess I'll go with some of the things that maybe make me stand out a little bit from the average. Uh, for starters, you may have guessed based on the color of my hair that I'm a little bit older than your average booktuber. Uh, and so I guess I could bring a little bit of experience to, uh, to book two. Uh, not to say that there aren't older creators out there, older than me, uh, and many of them are putting out uh, fantastic content, but I do think that the flavor of conversation and the flavor of opinions that you get from someone who is uh, a little bit older, who has seen a little bit more, who has a little bit more experience is gonna be different from someone who's younger. It's not to say it's better, because there is a ton that we can learn from uh, younger members of this community, myself included. But I do think that having an older voice who's seen a little bit of stuff and who's got some life experience under their belt uh, might be a little bit of a, a change of pace for some. The other thing I want to bring to BookTube is really this perspective that uh, we need to break out of some of these stereotypes. The reason this channel is called A Dude Who Reads is because it came out of a conversation that I was having with a colleague of mine who also happens to run a small independent publisher. And we were talking about books and the book business and the book industry. And one of the comments he made to me was, well, men just don't read, at least not fiction. Um, and I think that's crazy and I think that's preposterous. And I think when you have those kinds of preconceived notions, uh, that's when you're going to scare away people from reading. If you say men don't read fiction and you're a young man, the first thing that you're going to think is, well, this is not a hobby that is really for me. Um, you know, if you say women read romance, uh, but women don't read fantasy, for example, then you're going to have a lot of young women readers who gravitate towards romance, but leave aside fantasy when there's plenty of female fantasy readers who will tell you that it is a wonderful genre and they enjoy it immensely. Um, and so that's one of the things that I want to bring about here is kind of break down these barriers. I read widely. I read across almost every single genre. And so if you could take a look at a guy like me and just figure I'm just a regular ordinary guy who reads everything from the classics to com contemporary literary fiction to fantasy to narrative nonfiction to history to cozy, whatever. Uh, I'm open to anything. If, if it's a good book, it's a good book and I'll read it. Question number three, what won't you be doing? Um, so I think it's good to establish as a baseline what you can expect from me and what you shouldn't expect from me. And one of the things that I think you should definitely not expect from me is really in-depth book reviews. 
So it's not because I don't believe in doing book reviews. It's not because I feel like I'm above doing book reviews. It's just because I think there are people out there who do book reviews much, much better than I could. Um, and when I have done book reviews in the past on sites like Goodreads and in other places, uh, I think they serve their purpose, but they're not the reason that I'm here. I'm here really to talk about books a little bit more casually. And so what you're going to hear from me is a lot more my perspective on books. Obviously, I will tell you uh, what I liked about books. And really, my goal here is to share with you the books that I love. As a result, you're not going to hear me saying a lot of negative things about books, and you're not going to hear me talking about books I don't like. That's not because I like everything I read. It's because if I didn't enjoy something, I don't particularly feel like getting on camera and spending 20 minutes talking about why it was trash. Um, I would rather just put that one aside and say, you know what, that just wasn't for me. Maybe it has an audience. Maybe that audience wasn't me. I would much rather sit here and talk to you guys about things that I love, things that I enjoy, things that I would love for you to try out. So yeah, don't expect really in-depth book reviews from me because if I'm doing a book review properly, that means I need to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I don't have a ton of desire to talk about the ugly unless it's in the, con in the context of having a really good conversation because in that case, I wanna hear from someone else why something I didn't enjoy was something they enjoyed because maybe there's something I've missed. You know, it has happened in the past where I have not enjoyed something. I've had someone explain their perspective to me. I've given it a second shot and I've said, you know what? I misjudged this. This is actually not half bad. So that might be the small exception to the rule, but in general, no book reviews uh, that are super in depth and definitely uh, no negative book reviews. You will not find that on this channel. Question number four. What are you most excited about? Uh, no question here, the thing that I'm most excited about is connecting with other readers. Like I mentioned in my answer to the first question, it's the reason I'm here in the first place. Uh, I really want to be able to connect with other people and share my passion for books, talk about them, exchange ideas, maybe even argue a little bit. Um, that's okay too, um, but that is really what I'm here for. And uh, question number five, what kind of books do you like to read? How long you got? Uh, I read really, really widely. Um, so I read everything from classics, contemporary literary fiction. I read fantasy. I read sci-fi. I read nonfiction, historical nonfiction, history biographies, narrative nonfiction and memoirs, even in genres that I don't read a lot of, like, for example, mysteries. Uh, some of my all-time favorite books will be in genres that I don't read a lot of. A uh, great example being anything by James Elroy, who writes sort of noir, dark crime mystery books. Uh, you maybe know him from L.A. Confidential, which was an Oscar-winning movie, which was adapted from his book by the same name. Uh, Elroy, one of my favorite authors, but I'm not a big crime reader. But just gives you a sense that if it's good, I will read it. I will read from every single genre. I am not picky. You know what? I will even read a romance if I find the right one. I just haven't found the right one yet. Question number six and maybe seven. I'm going to combine uh, two questions, maybe even three into one here. Those questions are, why do you love reading? How did you develop a passion for reading? And what book or series got you into reading? I'm going to kind of all lump that into a single answer. So, you know, I think like many readers, I'm an introvert. Um, I hide it very well in my day to day. Uh, most of my career, I've had jobs where I've had to pretend to be extroverted. Uh, and if you know anything about introverts and extroverts, uh, introverts tend to get their energy from being alone, whereas extroverts tend to get their energy from being around other people. That doesn't mean that an introvert cannot spend a lot of time around other people and even enjoy the time they're spending around other people. However, it does mean that it drains them a lot more than when they're spending time alone. And so reading to me is kind of my recharge. It's the way that I get to kind of come back into myself. And for me, there is no greater form of entertainment than sitting down with a really good book. Um, how this came about is, you know, 
it goes back to really early on, right? Like I think almost everyone, my reading has gone through ebbs and flows and different patterns and so on and so forth. But when I was really young, what got me into reading in the first place was comic books, but not the comic books that you might think, not the, uh, not the superhero type comic books, the Superman, Batman, Spider-Man type comic books. Although uh, I did read a lot of those uh, when I was a little bit older. But uh, the kind of comics that really got me into reading were European comics. And so I was educated mostly in French when I was younger. And so the books that got me hooked on reading were things like uh, Tintin or Tintin in English, Asterix et Obelix, so Asterix, um, these sort of European comic books that uh, I just kind of fell in love with. And if you've ever picked these up, you know that there's a lot of text in there. They're not for little kids. Um, and some of the storylines can be relatively mature. Um, and so that was sort of my, my entryway into reading when I was really young, uh, probably in, you know, six, seven years old, kind of got me hooked. And then from there, again, I was educated mostly in French. And so there was a series of books called La Courte Echelle, which was sort of a series of books for young readers. I read a lot of those when I was a kid. Um, as I got a little bit older uh, and I started doing more reading in English, uh, I really hooked on to the Hardy Boys series of books. I think I read almost all of the Hardy Boys books from the original series that was published in like the 60s, I think. Um, even though today I barely read any mystery, those are books that, you know, really, really got me, kept me in the habit of reading. Um, and then around that same time, I discovered The Hobbit which was kind of my entry into the world of fantasy. And even though I didn't read a ton of fantasy at a, at a young age, The Hobbit really kind of opened my eyes to this fantastical, beautiful, magical world that was you know, something that I, I really wanted to see a whole lot more of. Um, when I got into sort of middle school, I, I got into more of a sci-fi um, phase, I guess. I read a lot of the, the Star Wars novels, uh, the things that were kind of, uh, you know, came after the original trilogy of movies before there was any talk of prequel movies or anything like that. Um, I read a ton of those books and those kept me going for a lot of middle school. And then moving into the later high school years, I think that's when I finally discovered that, you know, it wasn't just genre fiction that was appealing to me. Uh, there was great literary fiction out there. Uh, and the book that I think really opened my eyes to that, which, and today this is maybe a little bit of a controversial opinion, but J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye kind of showed me that you can have a classic book that is uh, a masterpiece of literary fiction that was also just a really fun read and easy to get through. And it wasn't bogged down in sort of this really, um, arcane kind of language and it was accessible um, and it was also so real. Um, and so The Catcher in the Rye really opened my eyes up to the fact that literary fiction had a ton to offer me. And from that point onwards, uh, I'd sank my teeth into a lot more literary fiction. In addition to J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye, John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men was the other book that completely floored me. Um, I think it was the first time that I ever sobbed while reading a book. Uh, if you've ever read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you haven't read the book, do yourself a favor. I think it's a hundred pages long, maybe. And the end of that, the end of that story is just a gut punch. Um, and so it was another one of those moments for me where I realized the power of really great writing. In university, I did the typical university thing and uh, maybe not typical for everyone, but definitely uh, pretty typical for a lot of geeks who like to read. I dove down the rabbit hole of reading a lot of philosophy, classic philosophy, modern philosophy. And then uh, when I got into the workforce, um, I, I kind of, my, my reading was balanced a little bit between sort of reading for entertainment and reading for sort of personal development and getting uh, better at both my job and getting better as a person. And so I read a lot of nonfiction. And I would say for most of the last uh, decade plus, most of my reading was nonfiction reading. Um, 
And it's only been the last couple of years where I've come back to fiction and really rediscovered uh, that love of fiction and that passion for it. So that's sort of a long story about my personal reading journey, but it gives you an idea of where I come from and you know why my tastes are so broad and some of the stuff that has really shaped who I've become and the type of reader that I am. Okay, now we're at question seven, eight. I'm not sure. Let's just run with it. Let's call it eight. Um, what question would you ask your favorite booktubers? A couple of them. Um, what are your hobbies outside of reading? Because a lot of the booktubers that I love and follow, uh, I think they're fantastic, but I know many of them have day jobs and I see how much they read and I wonder how they make time for doing anything else. So do they have hobbies outside of reading and, and what are they? Um, do they have to watch any TV? How do they make time for it all? Because uh, honestly, I'm here because I want to share my love for books, but I am not a guy who reads a uh, hundred plus books a year. So uh, I would definitely love to know how people kind of balance their personal lives, their reading hobby, kids if they have them, all this stuff. Um, so that's what I would ask my favorite booktubers. Question number nine. What challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? Uh, this one's easy. Thumbnails. Uh, I think I'm going to have a really hard time with thumbnails. Um, not because I'm inept with software and I can't produce a thumbnail. I just think I might go get to the point where I will spend longer creating a thumbnail than I will filming a video or editing a video um, just because I know myself. And I think that uh, that could be problematic when it comes to time management. So I'm going to have a tough time with thumbnails. And so if there's anyone out there who, uh, you know, has done this before and has a lot of experience and has any tips they want to share, please uh, down below in the comments, let me know what your best tips are for streamlining that process, because I know that I could just waste hours and hours and hours of time just working on a thumbnail for one video. Okay, we're coming up at the end here. So we've got uh, question number 10. What does your book collection look like? Well, um, there it is. That's it. It's, uh, it's pretty small. So I have read probably over a thousand books in my life. Um, but my book collection itself is relatively small and tidy. Um, aside from these books, there might be a few other books lying around the house in different places or maybe packed away in a box. But for the most part, uh, my book collection is really small. And that's because in addition to being a passionate reader, I'm also someone who tries to be as uh, minimalistic as possible. And so the only books you're really going to find on my bookshelf are books that either I have not read yet, which, you know, accounts for a fairly large number of the books on that shelf. Number two is books that I will refer back to at some point, and so some kind of reference book. Um, number three, books that I have absolutely loved and enjoyed and that I, you know, I'm going to enjoy looking at the spine of that book and it brings me joy just to see it. And number four, books that I am, that I've read before, but that I am going to reread because I do think rereading is one of those things that I do not do nearly enough of, but that I think is super important when it comes to really appreciating and owning a book. Uh, and when I mean owning a book, I don't mean in the physical sense, I mean, you know, internalizing the contents of a book. So that's, that's kind of why I have such a small collection of books compared to pretty much every other person that I have seen on BookTube who just have these massive libraries, which frankly, um, a small part of me really likes and really appreciates and would love to have that. But the other part of me that is like, no, don't have a million possessions just screams when I see that. So that's my book collection. That's it. And finally, the very last question uh, we have is where do you read? Uh, the answer to that is everywhere. Uh, pretty much everywhere you can think of. I uh, read in bed uh, before going to bed at night. I will read on the couch. I will read at the table in between bites if I'm eating by myself, um, which doesn't happen all that often, but if I am eating lunch on my own, I will have a book with me usually. I will listen to audiobooks in the car. If I am 
waiting in line for something, there's a good chance that I have something on the Kindle app on my phone that I'll be reading. Um, so I literally will read anywhere. Pretty much the only place I don't read is in my dedicated reading chair, which is right behind me. Why? I, I do not know. It's such a comfortable chair, it's such a great chair, and yet I barely ever use it, and I read everywhere else. But that's just how it shakes out. And that's it. No more questions. So uh, that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun interviewing myself. <laughs> um, and hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed some of the answers that I gave and got to know me a little bit more. If you liked what I had to say and you'd like to hear me blab about books a little bit more, hopefully you'll check out one of the other videos that are on my channel. So far, I'm a newbie, so there's not that many of them, but I am planning to put out more content on a regular basis. So I hope you stick around. Um, and if you do decide to stick around, uh, please leave me a comment down below, introduce yourself. I would love to get to know you. Like I said, I'm here to talk to people. I'm here to chat. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this. I'm psyched. So that's it. Until next time, gang. I hope you find some good books. Have fun and cheers.